digital media and social media is I started to understand that cross-media or omni-channel campaigns were becoming more prevalent and clients and specifically agencies and brands were asking us to be a little bit more intelligent with print campaigns and uh, a little bit more forthcoming as printers and I think it's still in its infancy of how this could be really fully exploited in the industry, but there is certainly a, a, a strong argument now for combining traditional media of print and digital media into what we call basically cross-media campaigns to maximise um, a client's marketing potential. So um, I want to talk to you about what social media isn't. Um, and what it actually is as well. Social media isn't, um, professional social media isn't posting about the first thing that comes in your head or the Starbucks drink you're drinking or the, the meal you've had at lunchtime. That's not what professional social media is. Um, professional social media is about posting things that are relevant to your brand and have an end goal. So what I mean by that is, it's really basically underpinned by your corporate strategy. You, know, you don't just post things on social media just because you, you thought about it. You post things on social media for a brand because there's an end goal, there's an objective. So if you're gonna be posting a picture of someone drinking a Starbucks cup, it's because you work for Starbucks and you wanna promote that brand, not because it's just something hip and trendy to do. So what's the power of social media? I mean, what sort of audiences are we looking at here? Um, so if we could just step back a little bit from print, which is very much, um, can be a one-to-one -one or it can be a one-to-many, but very much still a kind of an open type of channel. Social media is much more of a personalized kind of channel. And what I mean by that is that the audience that you're engaging with, you can't engage with in any other type of media in the same way. And that's, interactive and instant and responsive. And what I mean by that is you could send a message on Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, whatever you decide to use, and it could be picked up by somebody instantly anywhere in the world. So whether that's Sao Paulo or Sydney or Los Angeles or London, that message is being communicated anywhere in the world. And this can be interactive anywhere in the world immediately. And the other thing about that is that it's relatively cheap to do. But generally, it's just your own time and a little bit of software. So there's no other media that can compete with it. And I just want to take you through the type of audience numbers just to give you a generalistic idea about what type of platform you're dealing with here. So social media, as we know, it's been around for about 11 to 12 years now. Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook around about late 2005. And since then, you can see from the graph how much it's grown. And these are just the three major channels of LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. If you want to take YouTube into that, you can double this. But essentially, what this is showing is there's somewhere near about 3 billion people online at the moment in social media space. And that's a massive potential audience that print could never achieve uh, just through one marketing campaign, but you can when you combine it with social media. So what happens when you speak to marketing? I mean, what are they expecting? What are they looking for you to deliver? So there's sort of four questions really that you should be asking your client to really maximize a campaign's potential with combining print and the social and digital media side of it. What is the end objective? What is the client actually trying to achieve? What are they trying to do? So much we're on the reactive side as printers. We, we sit as printers and we, we sort of sit there reflecting on what could be. We just get to the end, we normally receive the artwork, we don't really understand what the campaign is about. If you're gonna start managing cross-media campaigns, you're gonna need to understand what the client's objectives are. Um, what is your client actually selling? Is it a service? Is it a, is it a product? Is it a, an advertisement? What exactly is it they're selling? You need to kind of understand that. And um, who are your customers' customers? So what's the demographic? What's the sociographic? Who are you trying to hit? And what resources do you need, both financial, technological, and human, to achieve the outcome and what to get these results? Do you have the right resources in-house to manage a cross-media campaign? 
Um, it might not always be the right solution to have a cross-media campaign. It depends on the demographic. It's changing a lot, but go back five years ago, it was pointless having a uh, social media, cross-media campaign for a retirement plan, for instance, because the demographic in social media at that time was very, very small, and print was much larger in that demographic. Now it's equaled up a little bit more, so those type of campaigns are, are generally equally as useful to use as a cross-media campaign. So I'm going to take you through some case studies because it's all very good me standing up here and telling you how to combine cross-media, social media, traditional print, and to educate your clients and to work alongside your clients to add value. So let's look at actual cross-media campaigns in action. So the first one I'm going to talk to you about is, is the Brit School. Now the Brit School are a, a, a talent school that are based in uh, just outside South London near Croydon. Um, they have ex alumni like Adele and Jesse J and Amy Winehouse and the new Spider-Man Tom Holland all went through this school. It's a public school, so it's, uh, it's, it's free to attend, and uh, if they just do extra, extra curriculum activities like uh, song, singing, dancing, and those kind of things. So what they wanted to do, their objectives was to generate awareness about what they did as a school, uh, build the brand reputation, and encourage others to engage with the school. Effectively, what they were looking to do is try and get more students to come to their school. Um, so even though they had a very elite alumni, they were still trying to get that message out there to attract parents to bring their kids to their school. So to understand um, what they were trying to achieve, we built a storyboard campaign for them. And they wanted to build and promote a Brit school, so they, we helped them to launch this live YouTube video for them, which was really cheap to do, really easy to do, uh, called the Brit School Experience. Uh, we teased out a competition around the Brit Awards, so the Brit Awards, the British Record Industry Trust, do fund a little bit of the Brit School. Um, and so we worked, they, they gave away some free tickets that the Brit School said they could use in a competition to, uh, to attract um, new people and uh, there was obviously printing involved with regards to the tickets and um, how that works and you'll see you'll see that as we go through it uh, they wanted support from the campaign from different types of channels so email marketing mobile marketing um, as well as social media and then we were going to award the tickets uh, promote the Brit Awards event uh, set up a hashtag that they could use at the awards and I'm sure you guys have seen loads of hashtags around IPEX as well so it's very common now, um, engaged with them on social media through the print and we wanted to build the audience and then we measured the results which is really important so we did the, the whole 360 of getting involved at the beginning, understanding the client's requirements, building the campaign and then delivering that campaign. So the, t the, the tickets were printed uh, for the Brit Awards and uh, we obviously put on there about the hashtag and, and, and the event and you can see there there's a, a live tweet there using the hashtags and how important that was because it generated more awareness. And we also, uh, as I said, helped with a, a, a video and we also started to promote more online as we got nearer to the Brit Awards. Now, appreciate um, some of your customers haven't got Justin Timberlake and Taylor Swift to help them promote their campaign. Um, the Brit School were just lucky that uh, they've got that type of people they can call on to help promote it, which obviously massively helps promote the campaign. Um, but just as a point of a case study, you can see that just by using different types of techniques, you can generate more and more interest. And these are live, live messages you're seeing that were actually posted up. So the Facebook campaigns, as you can see there, we started to measure and monitor uh, the metrics around if it was a successful campaign or not. And it's very hard, I get often asked by clients, how do you measure the success of a, a social media campaign? Unless you have, just as you do in print, a, a direct call to action, like whether that's a code or a telephone number or a voucher, it's very hard to know that if I post a tweet out right now, that I'm going to attract a new customer, unless that customer walks in 
into my office or phones me up and says, I saw that tweet, I, I didn't know about your company before then. So the correlation between understanding how, in, how much of an impact your social media has compared to your print is exactly the same. So you guys will know, you walk around the, the DMA, the Direct Marketing Association, you will ask them for generic figures around uh, what the return on investments are for marketing and mailing campaigns, and they will give you these figures around, well, it's one or two percent for mono, it might go up to three or four percent if it's personalized in color. It's quite ambiguous unless you have a direct correlation. Exactly the same happens with social media. So posting something up on social media without a call to action is hard to make a correlation. But what you can do is you can do an indirect correlation. And what I mean by that is if your sales figures are quite linear and you're, you're selling 50 widgets a week, and then you start a social media campaign and your widgets go up to 70 a week, you could probably say that so there's some sort of correlation there between that social media campaign and your increase in sales. And that's kind of really the most easiest way and probably realistic way you can measure the correlation. And so just to give you some more analytics about what happened around the social media um, with regards to the Brit School, they, their objectives were they wanted new followers, and you can see there's an increase there of followers. They wanted more interaction and more engagement, and you can see they had an increase on there. So it, for them, this was quite an easy metric to measure because right at the beginning, we, we understood what the client's requirements were. We combined that into a cross-media platform that involved video, printing, and social media and we got the desired results. Um, so that's kind of a, a full circle case study that you could take to an agency or a brand and you could say to them, look, we can actually measure this end to end. So hopefully from that case study, it's given you some confidence to go into a brand and say to them that, you know, this is something we can manage. It's not rocket science. And we just need to understand what your requirements are and what you expect us to deliver. And that's kind of how you would easily walk through a campaign. I'm going to show you another campaign now, uh, which involves print and social media. And some of you guys, um, certainly at the back of the room, will, will know this uh, this company. It's called the AEO. They're the Association of Event Organizers. So these are the guys that kind of. Uh, like the BPIF for, for us guys, okay, but for event organizers. They look after a lot of events, they advise on it, there's a bit of corporate governance that goes on. And they have an event at Grosvenor House, uh, just like we have the Print Awards or uh, the Print Week Awards and all those other types. Well, I'm not endorsing any of these, by the way. Uh, you can go to them, there's many other awards out there as well as the Print Week Awards. Um, but they have an awards that goes on and they wanted to uh, generate awareness around uh, this awards in particular by using a hashtag. Um, um, and by also creating um, a, a selfie, which we, we helped them do. And what we mean by that is we jumped on the back of something that was trending at the time, which was the selfie uh, back in 2014. And, and we thought, well, this is a great idea to jump on the back of this um, because it's quite trendy at the moment and everybody's doing it in social media. So the demographic of the AEO Excellence Awards is, I think it's fair to say, middle-aged. So the people there at the time back in 2014 weren't as prolific on social media as they are today, as the confidence has grown. Um, so they just wanted to sort of create a great a bit of awareness. They were a little bit nervous because they didn't know how much interaction there'd be. Um, but we tried to help them by printing the, um, the invitation card that you see here and by making sure front and centre that there was a social media guide for them uh, that helped them and talked them through it. We also, um, obviously at the time, jumped on the endorsement because we did all the printing for free for them. So we, we did a little bit of advertising, but we also included a, a QR code there to help people with a free social media white paper as well after the event. So a little thing they could take home, they could take the card with them, they got a QR code, they got a URL, and they could access a free social media guide as part of the engagement. So the engagement stats, if we're going to, I'm going to do this case study back to front. I'm going to show you how, 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 how much the impact there was at the beginning. Um, we had 36,269 engagements across that, which basically means people were viewing that, liking it, retweeting it, uh, posting on it. The awards itself, um, it's in the Grosvenor House, I'm sure you guys have been there for, for all the awards, um, had about uh, a thousand people. And so there was um, one thing to remember about when you're doing awards, because I've made this mistake, make sure you've got internet connection if you're going to do a social media campaign, because some of these awards are down below or uh, underneath uh, hotels and the internet's really poor. So 
So just make sure that's that's the case. But this is a, a good example and a good case study of a live event that involved printing, QR codes, and, and uh, social media. And you can see um, just here we've got a massive spike of the interaction. So the other thing as well when you're when you're planning campaigns and you're building up to a campaign, um, don't expect everything to start erupting before the campaign. It never does. So we normally do like a two-week kind of teasing, like you saw with the Brit School uh, tickets, and then actually as the event happens or the competition happens or the announcement happens um, that's when you get the peaks um, so so don't don't panic um, because it will work out in the end for you and from the metrics you can see the engagement the type of sources which is really quite important there whether they come through on a mobile whether it was done on a laptop you can drive down into that level of detail and from this data you can segment out your uh, your next marketing campaign and you can understand what type of people engage when they engage what type of day, what type of platforms they engage on, and, and you can tailor your next marketing campaign for your agency or your brand, or you can certainly give them advice on how to do it better. Um, so even though they were a little bit nervous that no one was going to participate, I think you can see that um, quite a few people did. Um, and we obviously had a great time there um, promoting it. Everybody got involved, uh, young and old. Uh, the other thing we did is um, I would be an opportunist. I, I sort of kind of saw Jimmy Carr, who was doing the uh, the comparing. And uh, yes, that is my big head in the in the shot there on the side. And I said to Jimmy, can you help us promote this while we were at the event? And he was really cool. And he said, yeah, fine. And we just promoted Jimmy Carr, um, AEO selfie, do a selfie like Jimmy Carr. And um, and everybody else, as you, as you saw, uh, joined in. So like the Taylor Swift thing and the, and the Justin Timberlake, uh, I, we jumped on the opportunity of a, you know, took the opportunity of, of the compare coming through at the awards, just grabbed him for two minutes while he had a coffee, he took a photo and it just helped boost the engagement, um, which was really great. So uh, we, had a, we, had a, we had a great uh, a, a great reception from that. And you can see from the metrics again, um, the, the analytics of the kind of engagement you get by using this type of media. Now bear in mind, you can see around the um, IPEX today, you'll see uh, hashtags for you to tweet and you will see people for you to follow. Back in 2014, that wasn't the case. We had to print cards and left them on the tables of the diners. And uh, they, were, they were left around the bar before you went down to the awards. So the print was the, was the beginning of it. Um, and, and here as well, you'll see the hashtags are printed up on screens and they're printed up on uh, banners. So to get the message across, people still use that medium of print. Um, but social media can drive the end of that campaign for you as well. So it's not just about um, looking at one type of marketing tool, i.e. print, to get you to an end solution. It's about being a little bit more intelligent, a little bit more in, uh, innovative. Um, and, and a new word I've learned from America recently is to come up with ideation. Um, I almost said that like Trump then. Like, no, don't, don't say that, though. sorry. I've offended everybody now. Um, but yeah, you need to come up with the ideation and the added value that you can give to your clients because that's what they're looking for. Um, you're not just printers, you're not print brokers, you're not people that are just coming up and, and, and uh, commoditizing print. You are trying to add value and that's what the brands and the agencies are looking for and have been looking for for the last 10 years. You guys are the professionals, you guys are the experts. Um, I would go to a dentist to get my teeth done, I wouldn't go to a guy around the corner and I expect the dentist to give me advice about how often I should brush my teeth. So that's the kind of thing that, that agencies and creatives and brands are looking for printers. They're looking for innovation, ideation, added value that you can bring to their marketing campaigns. It's very difficult, I know, because I've been on your side of the fence, as I said, because we normally get involved as printers too far down the line. Um, but it's definitely worth, and then you get accused of not being innovative. So you get both ends of the bad stick. But you need to start educating your clients that you need to be involved in concept stage, and that's the way you can add value and you can bring campaigns together. And now, hopefully, after this talk today, if they start mentioning online digital media, QR codes, it's not rocket science. You can pull it together with a minimal amount of expertise, and you can deliver those campaigns for you, hopefully just as I've sort of demonstrated over those, those couple of case studies. 
So um, I think uh, from that, hopefully you guys have got a little bit more confidence um, on understanding the social media platform. Hopefully I've gone over for you uh, the social media landscape, the way to measure metrics or at least to kind of understand the metrics that you're going to deliver, uh, the way to improve campaigns by doing a 360 kind of uh, review, uh, understanding where it, where it went wrong, where it went right, but more importantly understanding your client and your client's requirements. Um, you know, you need to know that's the most one of the most important things is to understand what they're trying to achieve and if they don't understand even what they're trying to achieve go back to their corporate strategy and move away from their marketing strategy and try and understand what their corporate identity is and what they're trying to do and you can help and add value at all those stages so um yeah, so yeah, there you go. So that, that's us. Uh, that's me. Um, I've finished the, uh, the talk now. Um, hopefully that's helped you guys. Um, I'm happy to take, we've got sort of three or four minutes, so I'm happy to take a couple of questions if anyone's got any. Yeah. Yeah. I probably won't be able to hear you. Um, <laughs> There's a mic. Come in. Here we go. Look at that. All right. Great. I caught, I caught the AV man a little bit by surprise. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, you mentioned omni-channel at the beginning. I just wonder what what the difference is if, if that word to cross media. What why you, why there are two words? Yeah, well, there's more. There's, there's a very good question. Thanks for pointing that out. There's there's cross media. There's multimedia. There's omni-channel. There's all these different types of terminology that's used in different places around the world. I prefer personally prefer cross media. Um, it's just something I've kind of always sort of pinned my colours to. Uh, but omni-channel means pretty much the same. thing thing, you know, multi-channel marketing as well, exactly the same thing, a multimedia. It just really depends on who you're talking to. My biggest advice to that is if ever you're in a meeting, do exactly what you just did. If somebody says to you, oh, we want to do a multimedia campaign, ask them exactly what they mean by that. Because media could mean TV and radio advertising, it could mean print media, it could mean social media. So try and just get the clarification and identity around that. So that's a good question, thank you for that. Anybody else got a question? Right down the front here. Thank you. Hi. If, if you're doing this sort of social media campaign in-house for yourself and, and trying to develop a business, can you give a recommendation for a simple piece of software that will monitor your responses on social media or yeah. your activity? Yeah, no problem. No, yeah, no problem at all. There's lots of free stuff out there. Um, there's things like Tweet Adder, there's Tweet Deck, there's all these kind of stuff. But the one I use mostly uh, because it's quite useful on the mobile, it's quite useful on a tablet, and it's very useful on a, on a laptop is, is a platform called Hootsuite. Um, so Hootsuite is for H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E. If I think you've got, don't quote me on this, but I think if you've got one or two um, accounts, it's free. And I think if you get like five, they charge you like, I don't know, I think it's like 70 pounds a month. If you get 10, it's like 200 pound a month or whatever as you grow. Um, you can monitor, you can uh, tweet from it, you can schedule tweets. So if you've got an audience that's in the other side of the world, like the States or Australia or somewhere like that, you can set it on their timeline. Um, you can uh, set up hashtags on it. You can. You, it's a great monitoring tool. It's cheap. Uh, sometimes it's free, depending on how many you've got, and it produces reports as well. So, my advice to you is um, start basic. Twitter. I always get asked which social media channel should we be on. Twitter is by far the easiest to use. Um, by far the most prolific. It's it's quite instant. I would strongly suggest you start slow and then build up. Don't try and get on all social media channels at once. Um, but Twitter's a great one to start with and Hootsuite is a great monitoring tool as well. Cool. I think I've just, yeah, I'm getting the um, sign, so that obviously means um, it's lunch or somebody wants to um, finish with me. But thank you so much for your patience. Uh, I really do hope you enjoy the rest of the talks and the rest of the show. And, um, and good luck with your cross-media, omni-channel marketing campaigns.